when the right people come together at the right moment, when they care almost as much about winning as they do about each other, they can become the best of the best. The best soccer show in the whole world. Here we go. It's the best soccer show. Jason Davis, Jared Dubois, Dos Acero, Otra Vez, mm. here to celebrate the U.S. victory in the Nations League final because we beat Mexico again. Jerry old hat. Mexico again. Old hat. It's, am I bored of this? Almost, almost. No, almost I'm not bored of it. Bored. I'm not bored of no. it at all because the semifinal made me care about the final. Ah, interesting. That it is really, interesting. Like, it was. It's funny how this that old adage of winning cures all wounds, right? Like that's right. Yes, it's tough to believe that the same team played both of those games. Winning is a hell of a drug. Doesn't matter how bad you feel. You take some winning, mm, your eyes <laughs> a cloud. Doesn't matter. Mm. I, look. I'm not bored of it. I'm kidding about that. But I wonder if you and I and and maybe people slightly younger than us oh. are like the last generation that's going to feel like this was a battle. This was a war. This was a real rivalry because right now there's no doubt. Oh, yeah, because I can remember no a doubt. time where Mexico was just like U.S. is right now where the talent gap was so severe. Uh, not, it, it, I, I don't know if the talent camp was actually severe. Yeah, it was. It, it was maybe not as bad as it is now between U.S. And Mexico, but the confidence in addition mm. to the talent cap, because no American team had ever shown they it could consistently be done. You know, um, that's the that's what well, Bruce Arena's first ten years started to give us. You know, and then uh, Bob Bradley built on. I think it's fair to say that there are guys in the nineties and we don't want to disrespect them. Right. We want to give them their flowers as the kids might say. They fought guys like Eric Winalda and Alexi Lawless and Tab Ramos. And yeah, you know, go down the list. They, they beat Mexico sometimes, right? They, they Mm -hmm. had wins against Mexico. They sort of chipped away at this idea that Mexico could not be beaten in CONCACAF by anybody. And then when Bruce took over for the O2 cycle after you know, after the U S had a terrible world cup in 98, that's when everything clicked off, right? 2001, La Guerra Fria, Dos Acero go to the next year in the round of 16 at the world cup, Dos Acero. And it's like, Nope. Okay. You don't got us anymore. La La Guerra Fria is really where it it, it turned, you know, uh, in that game in Columbus with Josh Wolf, Ernie Stewart. And that led into the 2002 world cup. That was 2001, I believe. Right. I'm going to do my, my Josh Wolf impression. I'm doing my Josh Wolf impression right now. <laughs> Score the goal. Yeah, I, mean, I believe that, that was 2001. If I don't, if I'm not mistaken, that was in the qualifying leading up to the Put my World hands Cup. inside my sleeves for anybody listening to the podcast. That, that was a big thing to come into the 2002 World Cup with because I, I remember that I believed we could win that game because we had just done it in big fashion on a big stage, you know, in Columbus, you know. <laughs> okay. You believed that we you believed that we could win? Is oh, that... <laughs> Yeah, I, I coined that? that. I coined that. Is I don't even know. I, I created that. Are we, are we done with that, by the way? I haven't paid attention enough to know it's out there. <laughs> I, as soon as it's in the commercial, I think it was done. Oh, man. All right. So I guess I have a question. Like, I'll start us off very quickly. Do it. Oh, shoot. Don't pick the vote in the morning. Because I think this is the narrative right now. And I do have other things to say about this game. And we can relive the glory of it if you want. Certainly two very cool. I mean, whatever you say about like how they happened. Two cool goals. Two goals that we will remember for a long time as U.S. men's national team fans. And I think you and I have had conversations about what's the greatest goal, like what stands out in your mind in terms of goals scored by the United States. But the pick your poison is this. Yes. There's been, I've seen, uh, especially after the Jamaica game, right? And we talked about that match on, on this show right afterwards. Oh, this isn't a golden generation. Stop calling it a golden generation. It, it's not good enough. But the words golden generation have been applied, right? So, yeah, you know, whatever. You want to say that uh, Jamaica was the real U.S. men's national team, fine. You want to say Mexico was the real U.S. men's national team, fine, whatever. We're going to find out more in Copa America. Clearly, this is the most uh, accomplished U.S. men's national team of all time in terms of the club affiliation and stuff like that. What is my pick your poison, by the way? Okay, You're, that's what I'm getting to it. Give me a second. Yeah, I a got lot a of preamble, to this. man. Okay. The, the drop was like two minutes ago. 
I'll reset. Is this a golden generation or is this the new normal in terms of talent for the U.S. men's national team? Um, I think the goal, I, I don't necessarily know that they have to be indifferent from each other, but I will say that it's a golden generation because I mean, the golden generation could usher in a new normal, you know, well, I don't see why that can't... a little bit. You're right. I, I don't, I don't see why. So, I mean, okay. The, the I, the was, was, was Plato's line of thought, not a golden generation that led into Socrates and Aristotle and stuff like that. Like you have, wow. That's very you, fancy of you. at some point, like, yes, yeah, someone moves the bar. But right. it doesn't mean that the bar moves back, but the golden generation moved the okay. bar forward. So, so, so obviously yeah. to our history, it's a golden generation. But and I don't think they, it's just about results either. It's about talent, you know, golden generation. It's not about results. A golden generation is, de is deemed by right. talent, not results. Yes. Right, because there have been golden generations that haven't done anything. And then you're like, well, okay, was well, it a golden Portugal's generation? Portugal's well, team clearly. that the U.S. beat in 2002 was a golden yeah. generation for Portugal. Yeah, don't say anything mean about Luis Figo, but yes, you're, you've got a point about that. I, I, I'd say that that's fair. I, 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 you know, just I kind of agree with you now that you've explained your position, but I think I am leaning into the idea that in terms of the level of talent the U.S. will produce, and I'm not saying that this is good enough to win a World Cup. I'm not there yet, right? I'm not, I'm not saying we're winning Copa America. Not there yet. Couldn't but in terms of like where players go, the kind of clubs they can get attached to, the levels they can play at, and what it means for the national team just in ter terms of pure talent, I do think that we've just seen the bar go up. Like, yeah, over this the, generation. Yeah, I think this one from Catching Foxes in the chat says, mix of new normal and a Mexico decline that will take years to fix due to poor talent development. Oh, I think, uh, I, I, absolutely. I think that's a, that's a really key, key thing to hear is that we are choosing to define this when playing Mexico at what must be their worst in a long time, you know? And oh, so I, right now, no one was talking golden generation after Jamaica, you know? No, 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 that's true. That's true. Well, they might have, but we've been talking about for you. We've been talking about what a waste yeah, of a golden generation. All right. If, if there's a, this is not us. We are at Defcon one. Defcon one. Defcon uno. We might be Defcon uno down in Mexico mm. right now. I mean, again, somebody said in the chat, this is Connor legit surprised that Mexico hasn't sacked their coach yet. The fact that, yeah that Jimmy Lozano has a job is kind of surprising based on the beating that they took. And then, look, I don't know that it was as dominant as the 3-0 in the semifinal last year. It wasn't that. But at no point during that game, man, I thought it was and I know the first, the first half was kind of this weird feeling out, not a lot of stuff happening, you, you know, just kind yeah, of... Yeah, like Mexico wasn't into... creating much during that time. No, they did. that. This was what was shocking, I think, for a lot of people, that mm -hmm. maybe... Are, like, where's the creative Mexico. thread where's the creative thread the, that was where's the blancos of old you know that like, was a, a scared mexico that was a let's not make a mistake mexico it not really feels like the flair panache and style mexico mexico is the offensively mexico is give the ball to check lozano see if he can beat someone oh, that God. is the offense it's the it's offense terrible. like Just there's terrible. there's no build-up there's no there's there's no maestro you know there's no one pulling the strings from mexico it almost seems like was blanco like a once in a lifetime player for mexico like yeah where's, probably I mean, but that's I mean, okay because you can make Gio up Dos, uh, where's the Gio Dos santos even like there's but not even, even, like but even Gio more Dos santos than that prime more than that, Jonathan says no Rafa Marquez. Obviously, Mar yeah. Rafa Marquez was not going to be a creative player. But what Rafa brought and what Catalyst. a number of those players, edge, fight, yes. right, yes. grit, uh, a, 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 an unwillingness to accept defeat at the hands of los gringos, right? That wasn't yeah. supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. And and I and look, okay, this is a fair thing too from Mel. Do we have the same result in Mexico? And I I don't think we know yet whether the United States can win in Mexico because it hasn't happened, right? It's happened but one it's time. Like in playing with, it's not like Mexico's playing, playing with a home field advantage, really. No, but but they are comfortable on home soil. They're flying. But you think this is American a monster cities. of Mexico's own making. Yes, this of course. Big, because they have chosen to play in the U.S. over and over again. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. decided to play so many games against each other. And yeah. Mexico has slowly built this into, A, less of a rivalry because they play so many of them. You know, and they have not they've chosen not to send their talent overseas. That's one of the main things that's going on here. And for a long time, Mexico's well, league was good enough to build a good enough player to be dominant in this region. And that's not that's so much the case anymore. They can make very good players, but can yeah. they make players that are tested at a high enough level consistently? Well, so look, I do think they'll keep the same. 
nothing's changed when it comes to Mexico and the way they they sort of handle their young talent, right? It's because there are players that that go overseas. Juca Lozano has gone overseas. Esed Alvarez, Alvarez is clearly the best player on that team. Clearly. By the way, I thought he got absolutely just eliminated from that game. Like he, sure. he wasn't a factor. Doesn't make that he's not the he best player the best on that player. team. Yeah. No, that that's fair. But if that's your best player and he doesn't show up mm-hmm. in a continental final against your most a hated rival, then what do you got going on here? You got but issues, what, what right? is Edson Alvarez's role, though? Is he supposed to be 100% defensive? Because it, it, it feels like he be... has he has to take some of the creative ed- edge off somebody, right? Like, they need someone to create from midfield, and this is your star player. He has to share some of that burden of creativity. Because it's not fun. And Tuna? Trust me, I saw him at the no. Galaxy. He ain't that good. Well, he's a winger, first of all. And well, I think still, that that's but where's part... the creativity coming from? Right, no, no, lineup? that's what I'm saying. Like, like you said, it's find Chucky in, in space. Try to, yep. If he can beat a player 1v1, then maybe something happens. You get a cutback or a, a fissure across the front of goal or something. And what does this say right? that he had to switch sides to go to Anthony Robinson's side? Dest isn't a great defender. You yeah, know, right. maybe it's the familiarity right. of playing at the same club team. He wanted to be against someone that doesn't know him as well. And at one point they switched. Maybe. Andy Robinson. Robinson is the better defender. I, mean, I, thought, I, just thought, I think that was, a, that was just panic. Like, we don't have anything else. What do we got going on? Choki, Choki's our one guy with any creative ability on the ball. Let's let's get him on the other side and see what happens. I mean, you know, I, I'm not afraid of a single player. Except for maybe Memo Ochoa when we're trying to take shots and he's blocking them. But that's yeah. it. That's all I got. And even he looks... A step. It, it look. He should be. He's what 30, 30 what thirty nine years old. Whatever. Yeah. Is. I think he's gonna turn forty soon. But there yeah, is I no mean, Chicharito that makes you nervous. All he needs is a half chance. There's no Gio Santos that like you get worried when he has the ball at the top of the eighteen. That he's gonna create something of himself. They don't have that. You know. And yeah. I don't know that U.S. has extremely dangerous pieces and by themselves either. Christian Pulisic maybe can create his own stuff. You know, and, and here and there. But as wow. a group. As a group, the team seems to have a chemistry of knowing and understanding each other. I think sometimes the setup holds them back, and that's a coaching thing. But mm-hmm. I think the players, you can't deny the fact that these players who have played together for so long together, still in their primes, are vastly ahead of where Mexico is from a chemistry standpoint. I, I, I just think it's obvious across the board. And and maybe I'll give you Alvarez if we have a Eunice on the field. Obviously, we didn't start Eunice Musa in this game. Uh, I give you an Alvarez in some cases, but outside of Edson Alvarez, I don't think there's a player on that Mexico team, certainly not in that first 11, that beats out the talent on the American side. And Chris Richard didn't have a great game, and maybe we could talk about center backs if you really want to get granular about it. But outside of that, I mean, man. Yeah, well, what well, we're talking center backs, then let's talk about the other side of that coin, and this is uh, from Doreen 1. I think usually it's Darren, usually, is it? Uh, maybe. Uh, I really associate Mexico's decline with Raul Jimenez's head injury. They haven't been the same since then. He's still just one player, but that is a thing, something when you look at this Mexico team, that is something that they're definitely missing. The focal Who, point player. The, the, right. focal, the head of the spear. Yeah. The head and, and, of the spear is what's missing with Mexico. And one of many things that's missing with sure. Mexico. And, and, and th- there was some controversy, right? Because Henry Martin got the start in this game like he had in the previous game against Panama. Obviously, they beat Panama. Everybody's screaming bloody murder that Santi Jimenez needs to play. Santi Jimenez gets in this game after the after Mexico had fallen behind the United States, and what did he do? He, he tripped over himself on purpose a couple of times. It's about his only contributions. Yeah. Got hey, by the way, I think that was trouble. a touch. I think that was a harsh yellow card for the simulation. I think the dude literally was flinching from the foot coming at his head. Now, Andy Robinson think, did not foul him, I but think I think he's flinching. You, if you do a Zapruder film breakdown on mm-hmm. that moment, okay, lots of things are happening. Yeah, Anthony Robinson goes in relatively reckless to start, but pulls mm-hmm. his foot back, right? Because he knows, I don't want to kick this guy in the yeah. box. Santi Jimenez sees the foot flying at his face, flinches, mm-hmm. totally normal reaction. Yeah. Then as he's going to the ground, kind of goes, oh, I might as well, might as well sell this. Yeah. And <laughs> gives, a, gives a whole sell job, which I, I think don't think he what... went to ground to simulate. I think once he was on the ground, he chose right. to. Yeah. I, that's, I, so, that's I don't it. know. I still think that's it's a little it. bit harsh for, for a yellow well, card okay. simulation. Let me bring it back. So, I, I, okay, before we do the, a bigger question about the future of this rivalry and CONCACAF and all of that, after I saw a headline down in Mexico that said, Mexico is essentially just another CONCACAF team now. Like, it's the United States, and then it's Ooh. everybody else, which is pretty—I mean, that's the Mexican media going after the Mexican national team. No, you can make that case. 
But let's talk about the American performance, right? We've yeah. had some some time to process this. Unlike on on Friday or Thursday night, rather, when we watched them struggle to beat Jamaica, needed an own goal off of Corey Burke. Corey mm-hmm. Burke saved Greg Berhalter's job. They get the job done on Sunday against Mexico. Um, I don't think they were ever not in control of that game. Agreed. Obviously, we don't expect a thirty yard bomb from Tyler Adams of all people. Mm-hmm. And Geo, you know, did a Geo thing. There were obviously other good moments that in, didn't end up being uh, goals. Let, let's forget. I, I hate that people have not made a big enough deal about this. That Christian Pulisic chip over the oh, defender the at the chip? end line. Are oh, you talking about the chop chip? Yes. Yes. A, all right. The, oh, baby. I don't have the good old baby, but that's oh, the, that's the, the old baby I got. Hit him. Hit him. What? What? I mean. Geez. Oh yeah, that's a good. That's for No, no. Save that for Sergio Dest. Okay. Well, he. There, there's something about Serginho. Serginho is all sizzle, not always. He has provided, but he's often yeah. sizzle with no stay. Like he's often the build up with no payoff. You know, it, it, if I was a cruder man, I might say he blue balls us on a regular basis. And that uh, I'll a say this. Bit of that. What I do like about Serginho Des performance, and I know we were trying to get to some different things and I saw railroaded here, but if you are going to make a stupid mistake and get a red card, and a deny you the, yourself the opportunity to represent your country in the semifinal, you yeah. better come into the final hot like he did. You better come <laughs> you in showing show like, up. this is what I, hey, right. guys, I'm here. Right. I'm, I'm going to do something. I'm a guy that you can't take off this field. I'm here right. for this. Right. That guy was like breaking like, ankles on the when night. You're, when, you're, when your boy in the fan group does something really shady, really something he shouldn't do, mm. he needs to show up with concert tickets for everybody next time he comes around. Like, it can't just be like, hey, can I come back and hang out? No, no, no. You better... Mm. You better be making us buy a couple rounds, you know. You better be giving us something. And look, I mean, Serginho, we know what talent, we know what kind of talent he is on the ball. That is absolutely without question. And that's why he will start most games for the United States. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, a, there's a bit of series of these. Like, there's death breaking ankles here. There's Gio Reyna, uh, last uh, the, the Nations League, going on walkabout, you know, 60 yards, carving dudes up. Mexico hasn't had highlights like that. They haven't had those highlights against the U.S. They're like the guys that are like it. It's deflating. It's a it's a it's a moral it's it's a soul killing moment yeah, they, to have, they they have guys that can do this to them. They don't look like a team that enters the game with feeling like they have. Well, maybe it, it's, it just it's, adds is, to the pressure. This is results based analysis, and I think that's important to point out. But they don't look like the team that you used to be scared of playing. Like I, I even coming into the game, I'm not sure I was nervous. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure I was like, Oh my God, Mexico. Like that's over that, that, that spark. There was right, a time where gone. the Torados, the Rafa, Rafa Marquez is, you know, like these guys were scary in like in out there, you know, like, man, they're going to destroy our players. And I, I really got to give it up to the U S for, for rising to the occasion. Um, <laughs> Wow, that's Jonathan is say. coming at you. Man. Well, that might be because you. we overpaid for a few Mexican players that were in those right. lineups it's, between Jonathan Jonathan is saying that Mexico looks like the 27 to 2023 galaxy. I, I, I don't want to just make this about Mexico's failures, right? This is we're, we're fans. Uh, of and the Tuna US was on that team, by the way. Uh, just, that's true. We're, uh, we're fans of the U.S. men's national team. And I want to be careful, right? Because um, I, don't, I don't want people. This isn't a raw, raw cheerleader show we're not going to sit here and tell you like oh my god we got copa america like we're going to make this deep run we're in a it's going to be great everything is 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 fantastic everything is brilliant there are still problems with this team and i think it's still fair to say mexico's no longer the measure mm. mexico is no longer the measure so and, what is well we're going to find out I, I look friendlies are always tough to zero in on how much they matter colombia brazil ahead of the copa america yeah. Right. How, how much do results matter versus how much do we sort of like we control play for a while or we have we're on the front uh, uh, foot. We're I'll pushing you, things. We're creating chances, that kind of stuff. I think the U.S. actually has a decent chance of showing well at Copa America. And here's why. I, they're going to play more teams. that are going to approach them the way Mexico did. than they're going to find teams to approach them the way Jamaica that did. Is, and that I is think a, that plays you know into the U.S.'s strengths. I usually give this to you when you say something crazy or weird. I'm giving it to you for this. This is a brilliant point. This is a brilliant point. And this from Jay Lesh. I was a bit worried strictly based on that 90 versus Jamaica. It's not that I thought they were guaranteed to beat Mexico. It's not that I thought that it was it was not a problem that they struggled against Jamaica to break them down. That is a problem against teams that are going to bunker. 
but I was less worried and I was not nervous because I knew Mexico, even if that is a, uh, that is not the Mexico we, we used to know. I had no doubt that Mexico was going to leave space, that Mexico was going to at least try to play which gives the U.S. everything that they need to be better. So your point is brilliant. So I, I'll see this. Bolivia, I would expect game one. That's the first matchup we have in, in yes. Copa America, Bolivia. Yes. I expect that to be both teams coming out, going to feel each other out, but I expect both teams to play. It's first game of the tournament. Could now, be. I'm glad that they're be. playing. I'm glad the U.S. is playing Panama in the second game. If they're playing Panama in the first game, I think you may see a Jamaican approach from Panama to try to get out of the first game against the home team and try right. to just get a result. If, if Jamaica if has a very, loses to Uruguay, Panama's getting to Uruguay the first game. Yeah. Yeah. They, ha- I have a feeling they're going to have to play for points, which is going to make them come out of their shell, which is to the USA's advantage. The right. goal will be by the time the Uruguay game comes around. Oh, we're both. You on may six not even have everything. You hope you're on six points. and You're not even worried yeah. about it. Right. Yeah. So the, 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 the matchups are probably the best order that the U S could play. Cause if you had Uruguay game one, yeah. And you had Panama Bolivia the second game against each other game one. USA could be coming out with zero points. The other teams could be coming out with points one or three. You could be playing a team with one or three points in that second round, and you're going to be playing a team that's going to be a bunch more defensive postured. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Now, we're going to be obviously talking about that way closer to the tournament, or, or, or the national team fans will be processing all of that way closer to the tournament. But, and we don't know about this is the thing, we can't project availability, injury, form, any number of things coming out of the European season when we finally get to Copa America. But I I think you're right in the general sense that if Bolivia decides to play because it's the first game and they want to get on a front foot and they know they probably need three points out of that game to advance, that is is a saving grace for the United States because if they decide to play Jamaica-style 10 men behind the ball or even if they occasionally press, that's trouble for the Americans. We've seen that. Mm Mm-hmm. Panama is a Panama is an old foe. Like I can't imagine Panama just sitting in, even if it was the first game. Like I can't imagine they're just going to say screw it. I don't think they sit out against Bolivia. I think Bolivia. That I mean, excuse me, that's against Uruguay. I think they're going to be incredibly defensive minded against Uruguay in game one. Uh, that uh, yes, that that I'm saying yes to. What I'm okay. saying is kind of regardless of that result. Even and if they were playing the United States in game one, I'm not saying that. I, I'm not sure that they would bunker. Exactly. Because but Jamaica has think... shown a way to frustrate the U.S. Yes, like that... that's true. But I think Panama's, uh, this is my, my gut more than anything else, the idea is, from Panama is we don't have to be scared of the United States. Right? We, we don't have to play scared. We, it felt like, for as well as Jamaica was organized in that Nations League final, they were playing yeah. not to lose. And I think Panama wants to play to win, especially in the Copa America, especially okay. on that stage. Right. Maybe so, maybe if it's a knockout game, it's it's different. But in a, a three game round robin first round, I, I think you can't quite go that negative. You know. Yeah. Look, obviously things could happen. Look, Panama gets a result against Uruguay, changes the whole complexion of the group. If Bolivia somehow managed to take something off of the United States, changes the whole complexion of the group. Right. I mean, it, it, imagine what Dan is saying that you you get four teams on. On one point each, everybody's played a grinded out draw in the first game. It yeah. leaves everything open, and now the pressure to beat Panama goes up dramatically for the United States. I mean, they need it; they need that anyway. But it's going to make it a, a, a much more intense affair. And to again, go back to the, I, to go back to the U.S. game, though, I, I've got a question for you. Obviously, Tyler Adams kind of showed why he had the position he had pre-injury. You know, yes. you remember, like, okay, defensively strong good in the tackle, good in disrupting passing lanes, good coming out and closing guys. I can't remember how many times I watched him. The way he comes out, he comes out at a, at a ball zigzagging. So you don't have either passing option. Like he's, he's kind of disrupting <laughs> yeah. both passing lanes as he comes out. He's, he's really he's incredible for that. Yeah. So in seeing him in a short appearance there, half uh, during the, the final, is Yunus Musa on the out? What yes. is the, what is yes. the three man midfield Look. then? If you are playing competition that is either on equal footing or better than you going into the game, I think Tyler Adams is going to start. And provided he comes back completely healthy and ends up a 90-minute player for the U.S. again, right? And and I was one of those people, and I will call myself out for this. I was one of those people who thought this was too early even for the time he played in these two games. I, I was like, oh, my God, put this guy in bubble wrap, put him on the yeah. shelf. 
let him sit out for a while. Or if he's going to play, get him 10 minutes in a reserve game in England and 20 minutes maybe here in yeah. the Premier League. There, I was surprised he was even on the roster, to be honest. Surpri- well, yeah, surprised he was on the Called roster. In. And then when he was on the roster, this this evening, I even heard this. Maybe he's just there for the U.S. men's national team training staff to take a look at him. Maybe sure. he's just on the roster so and yeah. called up, so then they release him, and then he's there, and you can take a Boost look at him. Oh, having the old captain around, you know? Your hamstring's coming together, son. You're you're doing great. I, I, I Look, I do think it's important to have options, and I think that Eunice Moose is going to be an option. Luca De La Torre is going to be an option. I think we're going to see Johnny Cardoso, Johnny Football, Johnny Soccer, whatever we're calling him, start to become more of an option. I, I, I didn't see enough in the limited minutes to be convinced by him, but I know other people did. Hmm. So I'm glad that that's an option. But I think right now, if you're saying we're playing a good team that we want to be, that we got to go after them, but we need st- defensive stability, it is McKenney, it is Adams, and it is Reyna. Because it that gives, is the best possible It gives possible you all mix. three of the things a good midfield needs. Defensive, defense, uh, hustle, and, yeah. and, and distribution. Like yeah. creativity, I should say instead. Like you get all three of those with the with them, and you get a lot of that even when you have Musa McKinney and Geo or MMA. But not having Geo out there, you lose a marked creativity and distribution element. It's, and without Tyler Adams out there, it's still a step down defensively. Even though you can get by, it's a step down defensively. Absolutely, absolutely. It, you lose, you lose comfort on the ball. Uh, Weston McKinney is okay with the ball at his feet. But yeah. how many times have you seen Weston McKenney eliminate two or three players off the dribble? Not that often. It's not. Yeah. It's not his game. He didn't have to. His Moose game is off that. the ball. McKenney's game is off the ball. His game is flick on passes. His game is finding space in the box. His game is winning balls in the air. His game is hustle. Both sides of the ball. I mean, we've seen him make that final pass, and he's turned it into a thing he does in, in Italy right now, which is brilliant. But he is still the all rounder, right? Tyler Adams is 100% the best defender the United States has, regardless of position. There's no doubt about that. And it allows Greg Berhalter a luxury. And that luxury is allowing Serginio Dest and or Anthony Robinson to be free to make the offensive run. Because you have someone dedicated to cover that space. When Musa is in there... It's he's still trying to get the midfield under control, and I don't think that he wants well, to look, sweep out there and do that kind of uh, of work. And then there's you, a hole. That, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. You know, you know how much I love Lucas Musa, and I do think yeah, he's going to too. be one of the best players the United States has ever had when his career Agreed. is over. He's still young. He is not a passer. He is just not a passer. He is comfort Ball passing dancing. five yard five yard balls, uh, square balls. He he you know, breaking lines saying, on the dribble. That's his breaking his lines job. on the dribble. That is who Eunice Musa is. And until Miss Musa McKinney is no longer that best version of that, I guess Miss McKinney is not the best version of that right now. Musa is better at breaking lines on the dribble than he is right now. But McKinney does enough stuff all around. It's one of the reasons why he's kept him in Ju- Juventus at six different positions over the last few different years because he is good enough at a bunch of different things that he ends up being duct taped well, in the so, midfield. And this is the thing we have to remember. None of these players is frozen in time in terms of what they can and cannot do right now, right? Even even Weston McKinney, who of of sort of the guys we've just been talking about, Tyler's 25 now too, so there's that, and he's had so much time off that there is that concern. But we know what he does well. I I hope Tyler Adams becomes a better passer of the ball. Sure. I mean, clearly he's become a better shooter of the ball somehow. I, I This is not, I'm not, this is not the first time I'm saying this. I have said it somewhere else. But it's a little bit like rookie of the year. <laughs> like they they fixed his hamstring and they fix it in a way, yep. makes it tight, and now he added mantium in it. It's <laughs> something like that. But Rain is 21. So as good as he might be in certain moments now, we figure he's gonna get better. Again, he's got to play at the club. Musa level. 21. That, Musa's 21. So there's or, a four-year or, gap between him and Weston McKinney. That's a full World Cup cycle that it's probably gonna be Musa's cycle, not McKinney's at some point. I mean, th- there's just a possibility that Musa takes leaps and bounds in terms of his passing, right? That's just, a, I'm not saying it's going to happen. Yeah. I'm saying it's a possibility. Yeah. And it's still, there's still room for so many of these guys to improve in certain ways. Now, th- that that doesn't mean that that everything's going to work perfectly, right? And and I think there are players who will push uh, for their place. I mean, if Luca Delatore was available for this camp, he would have played. 
Right? He he almost certainly would have played. Now, yeah. I don't know that it would have changed Tyler's minutes. I think maybe I instead of Malik Tillman, uh, Malik Tillman, potentially. Maybe, potentially. I by the way, uh, if there is a disappointment in this camp, in this in this window, it's it's Malik Tillman. I just I you could make the case man. for for, for Balogun as well. Oh yeah, but I think service was a lot of his issue. And mm. I don't know what the fix to that is. Right? And I'll say this too. You know, at the, while we drifted to the forward position real quick. I think Andre Red had a great game. I really did. I, I, mean, I should say too. great. He had a good game. I really mean, it, once again, he was asked to do a lot of dirty work. But what you'll notice is that the difference between when Balogun was in that position in Jamaica and even after Haji Wright came out versus Haji Wright, when the entry ball comes in back to goal, Haji Wright doesn't cough it up as much. He actually has a good first touch with the back to goal. He can hold it for a second and redistribute. That's something that Balogun really, really struggles with. Um, yeah. He's great when he's moving laterally. He's great when he's moving vertically. But when he's moving negatively to the ball, he just doesn't seem to have the ability to do that. When Haji Reich gives you a lot more stability at that position, I don't think he's as dynamic. I don't think he is as dangerous maybe in the in the six-yard box as as Balogun is to get on the, the trash of this stuff. But yeah. I think he made a case for why he has a position going forward. Uh, you know the the Maybe not the issue, position, but uh, position. the issues that that we saw with Balogun. Um, you know, look if they're winning games, it probably doesn't matter as much. But if this becomes a thing, and let's say the Copa America doesn't go well, first of all, we might be talking about whether or not Greg Berhalter is is out. I mean, there's there's that idea which we've thrown out there before. I don't know, but you know, th- this is a thing of does Balogun fit? If he doesn't fit the way they play now, can you make him fit? Is it as simple as having to you on the field? It certainly didn't look that way at various points. Uh, he didn't start against Mexico, so it's hard to know. Uh, part of it, been... I think part of it's confidence, too. A striker's a confidence position, you know, and he doesn't have that with his club team right now. We might get a different Balogun back at some point in the near future. Before Copa America? I don't know, man. It's not a lot of time to build confidence with well, what, I mean, I'm, I'm what they'll probably have the, what? Eight games left in in Liga. Yeah. You got yeah. eight games left. Go score some goals or nine, whatever it is. I mean, if he if yeah. he if he gets if he nets three goals over the next eight games, cool. Mm-hmm. Maybe you get a different Balogun back for Copa America. But if you get well, I, if you don't, you're not you're not giving up on him, right? I'm not I'm not no. saying that he's he's a he's a waste at this point. Like oh my god, Pelé Balogun didn't score in this Nations League. Mm-hmm. Trash him. No, I, I nobody's saying that. Right. And and as we've said many, 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 many times before, as we continue to to remember, try to remember, the the group is going to change from window to window because that's how this works. Some players will be injured, some players may not be informed. Brendan Aronson wasn't going to be in this camp until the Luke injury. Yeah. And then he's in this camp and Norhaji. he gets a he got or Haji Wright. That's a perfect example, right? A guy who wasn't supposed to be here gets the start against Mexico in the final, scores two goals against Jamaica to save the United And, and talk about guys summer. stepping up with with a half a chance. Tim Ream. I mean, yeah. Tim Ream has not been him, his, his normal Tim Ream self at Fulham this season, but that guy had a fantastic game against Mexico. He won everything in the air. His ability to, to distribute long-distance passes on the left side of the field is fantastic mm. as well. I think he had he had a stellar game, and not having to play him the first game and put 120 minutes on that frame and saving him for this, assuming that's yeah. what Berhalter was doing. Well, so kind of looks smart. Let's again. I, I don't know that he had a bad game. In fact, I'm looking at Thought Mob, and they rate him higher than Reem, which I I don't think I agree with. Uh, Chris Richards and, and just the the center back is situation as it sits. Right? Do you have? concerns because if you're looking across this team and you're wondering where's the weak link going into the summer it's probably at center back right two places now. two places center forward and and center back those are the two weakest areas on the field for the u.s national team you might be able to make the cape for goalkeeper but i'm not going to do that right now um mm. so the the issue is you have a really really good center back that's old and probably can't play a lot of minutes consistently um and he's not getting a ton of minutes at his at his club team but he's still good up here. So, yeah. and a big part of, of, of being a good center back is being positionally sound. So I, I think in a three game Copa America first round, you're probably saving Tim Ream for the last two games. You play him in the second game. You don't play him in the first. And if you need a result in the third, he's playing the third as well. I don't think he plays all three games of that first round. 
Yeah. But then you start comes well, to like, what's the next best options? It's obviously not ideal that you're turning to a 37 year old player and saying, Hey, <laughs> save our back line for us in this incredibly important international competition, which by the way, is just two years away from a world cup on home soil, which probably you'll be retired for. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, exactly. Just, the, the odds the, the, are the, he'll the, be part retired. of the experiment needs to start now. Why is what probably why it's good. He's not going to get three games in the first round or he's not getting, but, put but the there's semifinal not a guy, in the final. There's not a guy in this group where caliber. you go, I got 100% confidence in. Like, is Miles Robinson a decent player? Yeah, sure. but he is he at Tim Ream's level? Clearly not. So, <laughs> But he has why? things that Tim Ream doesn't. He's faster than Tim Ream. Okay. He's more agile. I mean, okay. and I think Chris Richards has things that Miles Robinson does. I think Chris Richards is better in the air than Miles Robinson. Um, but I don't know that any of them have what Tim Ream has when he's at his best all around. So I think... One thing I don't like seeing, though, is that we're having to potentially put Chris Richards and Miles Robinson together. I think it works, but for some reason, it just feels like there needs to be one guy that's more powerful in there, like a CCV or something like that. Maybe we don't need the power. I just don't know that Chris Richards shows that he has the, the dominance of Tim Ream had in the air. I don't know that Miles Robinson or Chris Richards have that. And that's one of the things that maybe I overvalue. And I want to see a CCV in there or something like that yeah. that can have that dominance. I think both those guys have the speed to play at the highest level. I think their decision making is still suspect. I think Miles Robinson's distribution is better than um, Chris Richards, but I don't know. None of them are the complete package for me, and that really worries me. Yeah, I mean it's a bunch of incomplete and and lesser than players, and then you're putting two of them together if you don't have Tim Ream on the field, and you're hoping that it works. I mean, if you have Reem on the field, you have a point of distribution that is so trustworthy, it changes everything about how the U.S. plays. Yeah, and if, if you, you had asked me it, a year ago... By the way, you could see it. Mexico was absolutely trying to target Richards when he was on the ball, right? There were moments when it was a little dicey back there with Richards on the ball, and, and it's not that Richards is terrible with the ball at his feet. He wouldn't be playing midfield at all in the Premier League if that was the case. It's that he's not Tim Reem, and if you are... Just a little bit under pressure in a big moment like that. That's what that's what teams do. And the other thing that worries me too is that you don't really see that next center back coming up right now either. Like the, there is Jalen Neal that is like, okay, last year, this time last year, you're thinking this kid could be ready for 2026. He could if he makes a move to Europe, he keeps his trajectory. Now he's yeah. just lost almost a year to abdominal issues, not back on the field yet, still. And it's like, how deep do you have to go? You have Marcus Fercanis, who also at the Galaxy was playing for the U.S. Men's National Team, and like he's falling off uh, off the radar as well. Like, I don't know where that next center back is, but there's no one that's close that's gonna your your pool for 2026. It looks like it's going to be Mark McKenzie, Tim Ream, maybe outside chance, yeah. Chris yeah. Richards, Miles Robson, CCV. Like that's it. Like, doesn't uh, look like I, there's anyone else I mean, I, look, right now. Things change, and they, they always they'll surprise us, and it does happen. I'm not saying it's a lock that one of the guys. I, should, will I didn't mention Trusty. I think Trusty has the outside chance. Oh, Austin Trusty well. is absolutely there. I, I think it's possible that you know Trusty gets some more playing time and starts to really round into a solid center back. That Mark McKenzie moves on from Belgium. That there's not a lot of time for that to happen, yeah. right? There's only two seasons before that happens. But maybe he gets a move out of Belgium and he's playing at a higher level. Uh, Eric is saying Jackson Reagan of the of the Sounders. That's a name to to watch. I will point out that the uh, that the USU twenty threes just drew with with France. And mm -hmm. while that you know it's one result, and who knows and it, whatever, who knows if these guys will all be on the Olympic team? You've got uh, so uh, what um, Jonathan Tompkinson, who's on loan at or, yeah on loan at Bradford City. I think he's actually I think he's technically a Norwich player. Somebody might have to let me know about his status. Uh, let's see. George Campbell, 22-year-old with Montreal. I mean, these, I'm not saying these are, like, definitely the guys, but two years is a long time for something to happen. Yeah, I, know, but I feel different about center back, though. If we were talking about a winger, a winger can hit the hit the splash in the next two years and be, like, shot out of a cannon. Center back's different, though. Yeah, it, There's something that about that needs a grown-ass man with a sense of maturity and ability to position themselves and – I don't know if you're center back just feels different well, to me in that but again, regard. So, so, so what Austin trustee, Chris Richards, Mark yeah. McKenzie, they're all 25, right? They're all right in that, that zone where if you're going to level up, it happens now. Like if you're going to level up, here's the, here's the scenario for each of those guys. If you're going to level up Mark McKenzie, get out of Belgium, get to a higher level. 
get to a higher level. Genk is a great team for, for Belgium, but he needs to do, and he's performing well for Genk. But if you're getting paired against Chris Richards, who's playing in the Premier League, I mean, you've got to get someplace higher. CCV needs to get to a higher level. Yeah. Celtic's not good sure. enough. They need also to, like the next two years. 25 at this point. Yeah, I think 25 ish. Like um, he needs to get to a higher level. Miles Robinson's going the other direction in terms of making a long term commitment to MLS. I think it's going to keep him as the as a possible choice, but his bar becomes even higher because you're always just comparing him against MLS quality product. For Chris Richards, it has to be locked down the center back position going into next year for yeah. Palace. Yeah. It has to be. And if it, mm. any one of those guys, whoever gets to those winning conditions first is potentially the guy that's going to, to, to lock this down. Austin Trusty, I think uh, championship this year, right? Championship. No, Austin Trusty. No, Austin no Trusty. premiership, but he's not starting consistently. He's not. He's not a starter. He's at Sheffield yeah. United and they're a terrible team that's going yeah. down, but he's yeah. there. And, you know, he's made he's made a significant number of appearances. He just has an, a starter on a regular basis for that team. So but I'll say, yeah. I, you know, I'm a big fan of Austin Trusty. I think physically he's a freak. He's physically a freak, dude. I love watching that that guy play. I think he is such a good athlete, but 17... he's got to get hundred minutes, 700, 1773 minutes in the premier league this season, That's roughly Russell, which is not games a, worth 22 games, 19 starts. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, a, a good, but again, a bad team. So it's really hard to know, like, yeah. are we looking at a good player on a bad team? Or are we looking at a, a middling championship level player who's just with a team that's that's a sinking ship right i, I, I think that's really yeah. hard and I, I i do i i do like his story i like the fact that nobody thought anything of him coming out of colorado and then he suddenly arsenal's like yeah we'll take wait, what arsenal so it, he here's, a, here's a question player. for you here's a big picture question for you is tim ream hanging on hurting our 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 development of, of well, center backs for 2026 even if I would make that argument, I don't Tim Ream helps shit. you win now. Yeah, I don't give a shit. I mean, it's not Tim Ream's fault there's nobody pushing him out. Like that it's on the next generation to push him out. Not the other way around. It's not on him to say, Oh, I gotta uh, I gotta step aside so somebody else can uh, can come in. But so, yeah, I'm just I asking mean, I'm not asking what he should do. I'm saying does it worry you that guys are not getting minutes that are more likely to be no, because, a part because of 2026. I, well, man. It, it, are you asking me if Tim Ream is a safety blanket for Burhalter at this point and, and he's just going to keep going back to it and that means somebody else doesn't get important minutes? I guess that's a possible argument. But I think Greg's job is to win games now and, and Tim Ream gives you the best chance to do that. So you have to play yeah. Tim Ream if he's the best. If he's the best option. Right? Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I don't know. I, I think this is, is such a weird experience this nation's league right with the frustration the disappointment of the inability to break down jamaica needing the goal from uh from uh Herc. jamaica to to get into the uh, extra time period and obviously haji Wright, who wasn't supposed to be there what he wasn't even supposed to be there mm -hmm. they're not supposed to be here today he, he scores two goals off a of Reyna, who also is a conundrum wrapped inside a riddle wrapped inside an enigma wrapped inside i don't know not with the national team he's not no, well, but okay, that's an interesting one. And I compared him to like I'm, I'm wondering. I hope this isn't the case. Like, is is Gio Reyna going to become our Ricardo Caresma? Like, if you remember, Caresma played for Portugal. He was always, always uh, good for I, Portugal. I think he's another Christian Pulisic. Pulisic was in this this position a year ago, but where Pulisic he would come to the national resume. team and it was an ocean of tranquility for him when he could not get on the field for Chelsea. I mean that 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 is true to an extent, but but Christian had success at Dortmund. He had success at Chelsea before he got relegated to no man's land. He got sent to Siberia. Fair, fair. That, but, but that's not what Gio has. Gio's got no, Gio's got a eight game stretch where he scored a couple goals before Dortmund collapsed last year. That's what he's got. That's do you think, all he's do you got. Do you think Nuno Espirito Santo is impressed by what happened here in Nations League? Does it get Gio any time? Uh, no, I don't think it makes a single lick of difference. This in is fact, the guy saw, grasping saw, for something positive for his team. I saw a video of Nuno today basically mm -hmm. saying, we're so proud of Gio. Good job for him. Are you going to play him? Uh, well, we're going to see what happens. We have, you know, we got a bunch of players that want to win games for this club. I mean, I'm paraphrasing dramatically, but that's what he said. He didn't commit to anything. Yeah, he didn't commit to playing. I, Gio, what I like, which that, he shouldn't. He his shouldn't fan base that. is probably giving pressure now. I think there's pressure. 
I think there's pressure to play him now. I think there is. Forced fan base might put some pressure on him. Remember that they're also under the specter of the points deduction. Yeah. And there's going to be an appeal, and all that's going to be part of the story for 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 Forrest this year. And and, and it, whatever happens at Forrest, and they're what? How many games left? Nine games left? I think that might be heavy, actually. Well, maybe it's nine. So whatever happens at Forrest, there's a limited number of minutes before Gio does what at the end of the season? Goes right back to Dortmund, where they're going to be like, Oh, you're here again? Ah, bro, I don't have a space for you. I'm sorry. Or I don't know. What are they going to do? What 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 do we even imagine Dortmund doing with Gio Reyna when he returns from love? I, I, they signed him for a longer-term deal, so they got to feel like they have some kind of plan for him. But I just don't see it with if with Jaden Sancho still in there. And I agree that they're playing different positions. But I, I don't know that... I mean, maybe Julian Brandt moves on. Um, I, I I don't know. Uh, someone's gonna have to move to make a to make space for. There for is Gio a possibility then. of some players moving on that could open up some things. If Marco Royce decides to to leave or yeah. at I mean, he's playing retire. as a sub most of the time, he's not starting most games anyway. No, but I'm just saying it's a, it's one it's one step closer yeah. to being in the rotation. Right. Yeah. That, and I think and, and look to to uh, Dan's point, I don't care how he plays or sits at Forest as long as he plays well for us. Right. And this is what mean, I'm saying. Like, that. like Ricardo Caresma, it was always kind of like dicey on his club situation, but he showed up for Portugal and he, he did incredible things. And it's like if Gio does that for us, do I care? I do because I think it hurts his further development after Forest. Like it hurts his value. It hurts what his options are going to be for a club team going forward. I think his body probably needs some repetitions in its life. I mean, we can't even play him 90 minutes because he's not getting club fitness. You know, like it's a good point. It's a good I, point. I, the, the guy, he got 75 and that but was supposed it, to be on a 45 look, minute appearance. If we're only going to, if we're, if, if he's only going to play well for one, one team, only get minutes for one, it, then I'm glad it's the U S men's national team. Cause we don't have a player like, but if it. he can't give you 90, is that a problem? Yeah, I mean, it's a problem, but I'd rather have 65 of Geo than nothing, right? Mm-hmm. Than zero, right? I'd rather have that player and have him be effective for a half than not have that player at all. And I, I know that's kind of a weird scenario because Geo's not Are you still going to feel that way when his options are he comes back to MLS at 23? He's not going to come back to MLS at 23. That's not, I mean, okay. I, I say, I, I don't know why I'm saying that with so much confidence because, again, it's pretty clear that something goes wrong with him. Either in training, either in the dressing room, mm-hmm. his relationship with managers. I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know what happens that keeps managers from starting or giving Geo significant minutes. But it's something because yeah. we see how good he can be. And, it, and it's not, while, while of course it's the difference between the international game and what he would see in the Premier League or what he saw in the Bundesliga, it's not so dramatically different that you wouldn't f- find a way to use a player like that if you thought he would help your team if you were Edin Tursic or Nuno Espirito Santo. Yeah, I don't know. It feels yeah, there's something wild. we're missing. It just feels like there's something we're missing, man. And um I I don't know what it is. You want to uh, you want to you want to talk some uh you want to talk some like gossip some beef? like on the media side? Is some beef. Want to talk some beef? Yeah. Um okay, so you know, everybody I uh, imagine has heard uh what Greg Berhalter said after the the Jamaica game, right? Yeah. We were on the air immediately after it, and in the press uh, post game press conference, without being asked, without any prompting, nobody said, "Hey, Greg, what do you think about somebody saying that maybe Gio Reyna shouldn't be in this in this team?" Greg Berhalter, unprompted, said, "Oh, um, you know, who Did was you guys it hear that this? said?" I hear that. Yeah. Someone said that. I think you guys hear that. Yeah. That's what he, that's something, something like that. Like, did you actually, let me, let me pull up the exact quote. I, I could have gotten the, the audio, but that's okay. We'll just do it this way. Um, he said, I heard someone somewhere that someone asked, why did Gio get called into camp? Do you guys hear that? Anyone? He showed why tonight. It's clear. He deserves to play on this team. Yeah. And that, that in itself is, is a misquote too. Cause what Marsh said is just that, that he may not have brought him in because he has to earn his spot by his club performance. It's not questioning why did Burhalter do it or that Gio necessarily deserves it. I think he was just saying that he may not if it was his decision because he wants guys to feel like well, they have so to earn the spot. So this is what happened, right? It, from my reading, Jesse Marsh, who has 
flipped on the hot take switch because mm-hmm. that's his job now. And look, he's never been a guy. He's never been shy to say what he thinks. I think that, uh, he's obviously not a wallflower. It's why he was good or why he got so many people to give him managerial jobs because he isn't, he, he's sort of engaging that way. Right. He did what people in media do. And, you know, I'm not making it about me, but I've done this for 10 years. This is my career to a certain point. You ask a rhetorical question, mm-hmm. and then either you answer it yourself with your opinion, or you leave it out there for the audience to go, oh, yeah, that's a good thought. <clears throat> I, 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 This sort of was my thing for a while on my old show. Like, you ask a rhetorical question. If you don't have anybody to talk to you, and I didn't, I was all by myself. Mm. So I would, like, throw out something like, something I might not even agree with, yeah, but obviously it's part of the conversation, right? So Jesse did that. Right? Hot, sort of hot take, but sort of just asking the obvious question. And Greg made a point to bring it up in the post game press conference. Yeah. Sort of mashed, uh, sort of messed up the words, sort of misrepresented what Jesse said. And what I took from this, I, I, I've seen some people are saying that this was covering deflection. Nate, it was total deflection from a horrible performance. Hmm? Right. And. GGG signing, showing signs of weakness, starting to crack. That's from KY718. I don't buy that at all. I, really? I don't buy You think that he's playing chess when we're playing checkers? I don't know that it's chess. I just okay. think that Greg Berhalter took what was available to him, and maybe he was annoyed by it, right? Maybe he was annoyed by what Jesse said. Maybe he does resent Jesse a bit because Jesse's done that thing that I, I think it, it, it's – there, there's the fraternity, right? And they're all in this together. And not only are they both coaches, they're both Americans, yeah. right? They're both trying to prove American soccer is good enough on the international level for Greg and in the club game in Europe for, for Jesse. And I don't know what their relationship was before. I, I feel like they both asked out the same girl to prom. Burhalter got the date, but the other guy's still at school, you know, and he knows that he asked his girl out, you know, and like, like he's always wondering, is that dude creeping on her? You know, I, I, there, there's something there where... It's like you're aware that there's this other threat in your vicinity. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, like, what's he saying? What's he saying when I'm not around? Well, yeah, what, look, what, what's he saying? I got to defend myself here. And I don't think he does need to defend himself. He got the okay, job. Sure, he got the girl. Sure. You know, I, I, I agree with that. And I, look, if you want to read this as as Greg having thin skin, I think that's a fair reading. It's yep. just not how I. OK, I don't think it's the thrust of it. I think the thrust of it is that he was making a point to back Geo. Because it, it, he feels it's necessary for him to be public about his support for Geo because yeah. of the history he has with Geo. Like, for I sure. just think that that's I think that's more his motivation than, oh, my God, G- Jesse Marsh is questioning my choices and and he's talking about me in public. Greg's not an idiot. Whatever you want to say about his, his his soccer acumen as a coach, he's not an idiot. He understands that the media is going to say stuff and it's going to annoy him or annoy yeah. It's going to be, by the way, good, good, well he, done by CBS Golazo on getting Jesse Marsh to do a podcast because this kind of thing coming out of it is, is very nice for them. I, yeah. I mean, look, this is ma- This is what that, that thing that ESPN constantly gets accused of sometimes of like, they report something and there's a reaction it, and then they report on the reaction. And doesn't like, this <laughs> watching Jesse Marsh do this, yeah. doesn't it make you just feel like someone out there needs to back up the truck? To have Bruce Arena do a podcast. Oh man, do can we you really imagine want that, if we just allowed him have an open mic, like talking about just destroying the things that he's seeing in U.S. soccer? Like you're telling me you wouldn't listen to Bruce Arena, like just old man rant off the porch. I I might for a little while. It would probably get boring eventually once he burned all the good stories. Mm. I mean, I don't know if he was just throwing bombs at people, but I don't even like. Does, does Bruce seem like the kind of guy that would throw bombs? He has to have a person with him. He's got to have someone to incite him, to, to prod him, to sure. push him, pick, poke him with a yeah. stick, you know? But I just I do think that... I, look, I'm not saying this is bad for American soccer, by the way. And look, Ramiro's taking issue. No chance. Greg is 100% saying that due to taking Mar- Jess's, uh, Mar- Marsh's remarks personally. No chance defending Geo is the primary motivation. And, and by the way, look, why do we all assume it's Jesse Marsh he's talking about? Well, Plenty that's, of people that's question thing. bringing Geo. That that's that. I think that that people are connecting the dots because of the podcast, as you said, well, right? Because then, Jesse Marsh. That's why they're I, connecting I, the dots. Yeah, yeah, of course. And look again, it can be both things, Romero. It can be both things, but yeah. I do think that Greg, and this has been proven out 
through history, through his his time with the national team, he has an overdeveloped sense of we're in this together, we're a family, we're 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 a unit, we're we're growing, et cetera, et cetera. And while he had an issue with Gio that split him from Gio and split him from the Reinas and all that stuff, he still believes that. And he still thinks it's incredibly important to hold this thing together like it's a family. Tyler Adams talked a lot about it in this camp. Yunus mm. Musa talked about it a lot in this camp. I think it, this is, again, whether it's conscious or not, this is his I'm protecting my guys instinct. That That's my read. Like Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's just question. annoyed at Jesse. How many great geo performances will it take before there's a chance that Claudio and Greg have a relationship again? Or is that gone? I man, I, I mean, they're going to be around. You just saw they were up there in the building. They were up there, at, at, I, up in know, the suite. You know, I like occasionally hear from somebody who's in contact with the Reynas. I don't need to mention any names because mm. I don't want to get confused. For once okay. on the show, you're not going to mention. I don't that want name. to get confused here on the best soccer show with my good friend. I Jerry made it Dubois. easy on you. I don't know if you know. I put I put my name right I there. See. It like, says Rodius it on the screen for anybody watching the video. It says Rodius again. Thank you for that because yeah. your name's not that other name. That person has said they're fine. They're ecstatic. They're cool with the national team situation. Hmm. That they see him valued, that he's getting time, that he's scoring goals, that he's providing. Hey, boom, everything's great. And he sounds, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's a. Maybe he's just kind of one of those kids that puts on an act when the adults are around. But he looks like he's fine and he's having a good time, right? And he talks, first of all, his, his voice is so deep that it throws me every single time. But he's like, hey, I love these guys. And maybe he doesn't love Greg. But man, you don't have to love the the coach to love the team. I do right? wonder sometimes. I feel like Gio is in a weird place generationally in the team, where there's definitely the click of Pulisic, Adams, yeah. McKenney, yeah. Haji Throwing Wright. Haji now? That. Yeah. yeah, there's there's that click, and then you've got like the foreign contingent, the, the Anthony Robinsons, the the Dests. You know, right. you got those guys like that. I feel Gio and Scally are like in this one little small bubble that I don't know who else. I don't feel like Musa's in that with them. You know, I feel like Musa's more in that desk camp. I, even though Musa is the right age to be with Scali mm-hmm. and, and, and Gio, I yeah. don't know where, like what's that click and what's, I don't know that there's a gel there. They don't seem to be the same temperament or personality type as the generation that's right immediately before them. This is very granular analysis of the click situation with the U.S. Mm. men's national team. I don't know. Brendan Aronson's a good shout. He's kind of in that. He does seem to be a peacemaker a little bit. He seems to be the guy that can go to all the different groups on school. Yeah. This, you know. What, what, so, so, and I've seen the videos, right, of the aftermath of the, the win over Mexico. Tim Ream is just, what, like in the corner, just sitting quietly, ruminating on his long career as an ancient one. <laughs> like, yeah. What is he doing? Like, what is he doing? Because he doesn't fit any of this. I yeah, wanna, it, Matt it's Turner. Matt Turner. Matt Turner is the guy that wants to be friends with everybody. Like he's bouncing all the time, bouncing around the clicks. He's always making yeah. jokes. You got what are you guys talking about? You guys talking about that? Yeah, that's funny. And then you go over the other click. What are you guys talking about? Like mm. that's Matt Turner. 100%. I can see that. He's got a little Labrador to him. Yeah, there's there's some of that. All right. Uh, I know you have a heart out in just like, I do like two out. minutes. So uh, you love a good heart out. Um, mm. Any other business to get to before we wrap it up? I think I mean, that's it. Obviously, before this, we did a bonus show. We are It's already in the can, ready to go. And if you'd like to mm. get those, you can get those on our Patreon. And uh, we're going to be doing some of those live. So we'll put a link in the Patreon when we're doing them. And right. if you want to come in yeah. and hang out during them, you're more than welcome to. I forgot to do that to. tonight. My apologies to all the besties uh, who might have been around for the live bonus. But we will make an effort to do that live the 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 besties uh slack community is incredible please make sure you join up if you decide to join the patreon Um, many of the people you see in the chat here tonight are are there of them many of them are there uh i will mention this because i mean podcast people already know it's happening Mm. yeah never mind that's show business that doesn't really need an explanation Sometimes you just don't have to tell people everything. If right? you'd like to get uh, the, the the show ad free, you can get that on Patreon as well. If it, That's uh, right. If you want the podcast ad free, sign up for the Patreon. Uh, obviously, it's available on YouTube. However, you watch your YouTubes. Mm-hmm. Uh, subscribing to the YouTube channel helps. Liking the video helps. Like to get our numbers up. Like, let's go. Let's get to twenty five hundred subscribers. Can we do that? Is that a goal that we can hit before Copa America? Maybe. Maybe. Let's try to do I it. Think that's, I think that's tell like a, a friend. A thing. Yeah, tell a friend. 
If you're watching you right go. now, hit that button in the corner right there. Yeah, yeah. Get, hit the button. Hit hit all those hit all those important buttons. Uh, get us more views than the financial advice videos my wife is now watching, making me watch on YouTube. Jesus, lots of those. Do you guys know about EFTs? I can tell you all about a good EFT. Couldn't tell you, dude. <laughs> you're not you're not deep. And in I'm the not going to sit through your pyramid scheme uh, presentation either. Not who, who said anything about pyramid? I'm not saying give me oh, your no. money. I mean, that's not what's happening. You got to you got to get a brokerage account, bro. You got to go, got to go with the the investor bros. Got to go, <laughs> man. Got to go. I don't got that. enough time left in my life to start that stuff, man. I just All need right. to go for IRAs and 401ks and see how I fare. All right, you get get your IRA fixed. All right, thank you very much for listening, guys. We're back at it next week. We'll see you then. Bye. It was there. Oh, for. here we go. Saucing them up. Hit him, hit him. What, what? Michael freaking out of high school for scale. Get to the chopper! Who asked those questions? Two feel respect for the gender. Two feel respect for the gender. We are at DEFCON 1. DEFCON 1. The Sausage King of Chicago. WNBC. WNBC. Can I get a manager? Can I please get a manager? Jay Rodius.